Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Explore the Beyond. The Grip of the Fungal Queen. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it is a pretty cool name. I hope you're all doing well. Um, it's been a while. Apologies for, like, the just disappearing. It wasn't overly intentional, just things have happened and, you know, um, you know, just needed, ended up needing to take a bit of a, bit of a break. Um, today we begin a new campaign, which should take us through to mid to late November, September, sorry, not November, um, all being well. Um, with three players, Burius and Josh, you are aware of, usual scales players, and Picky, also known as Chloe, um, recently made her debut on the Verdemont Chronicle. Um, she is also joining the crew. <clears throat> and then there's me, of course, Megalo, everyone's favorite. Um... Anyway, enough jibber-jabber. I'm going to press this button, and we're going to introduce the team. Hello, team. Hello. 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 There we go. You're all here. Good. Um, how is everyone doing? Doing good. Excited. Yeah, good, thanks. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. I'm good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Right. Shall we get started? I think we should. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> we join our three heroes on a caravan from the great city of Crown Heart, nestled in the Creovalon Kingdom. Um, the six-week journey they've undertaken um, from Crown Heart has taken them through the, the heart of the entire kingdom through forest, through plains, over rivers, and over um, yards, essentially. Um, encountering all types of people and all walks of life. We... There's been mostly a settled journey. There haven't been that many... There haven't been any disturbances. The kingdom is fairly... Um, is fairly peaceful at the moment. The, there's been no war, there's been very little banditry, there's guard posts very regularly keeping order among the civilians. And it's not until we join our heroes as they approach a small town called Summer Heath, um, one of the last legs of the journey before they arrive at their destination of Port Grande that things start seeming a bit off about a mile out of the city about a mile out of the town you all start noticing giant sludge pools essentially with growths of fungus and and difficult to describe what growing out of them and just kind of expanding um, almost like veins, roots almost expanding out into the ground and just reaching wherever they can, engulfing trees engulfing bushes, engulfing rocks and small cliffs, there's even where you are now um, a small pond essentially that has now been mostly covered over by this sludge. You're accompanied on your journey by ten companions. These ten companions have been with you the whole time. They've been fairly dependable, let's say. Four of whom are civilians. They've kept themselves to themselves. They've been slightly put off by your physique and 
world knowledge, let's say. However, three of them are also guards. There's a goblin who, much like one of our characters, is wearing armor that seems to indicate some kind of patron or deity. And then two others, a halfling and a human, who are wearing similar looking armor to each other lighter on the light side not leather perhaps studded leather maybe um gilded with some steel here or there for a bit more strength and they seem the most familiar with each other almost always talking trying to interact with you as best they can get to know you a little bit um there's a gnome and a tiefling who always seem at odds with each other never engaging each other in conversation without taking little jabs at each other um, the tiefling often coming out worse in this regard. However, he, they do occasionally get a good jab in here and there. And then there's Owen, the, hum, the human. He is the caravan leader. He's the one who took you on for this journey and along the way has picked up some civilians for a fee, of course. Um, he's fairly tall and fairly gruff. He's done this a long time, you can tell. Um, he's got the sort of the look of someone who hasn't shaved for the whole six week journey and potentially hasn't bathed for just as long he's got a very sour smell to him but he's always been pleasant enough whenever he's interacted with you never never want to turn down conversation when it's offered Eventually, he decides that it's, enough is enough. The, the sludge and the fungus is, needs a bit of investigation. He's been talking about this town for a fair while. He, seem, he seems to know a few people here, has had some business here in the past. And you can see that there's a worried expression on his face um, about this unusual situation. Um... <clears throat> Excuse me. As him and the human fighter both disembark, one from his horse and one from the cart, um, they go over and they investigate the sludge from afar, giving plenty of room. Um, their nose crinkling up as they get approach it. Um, one of the civilians, however. Um, you would know is called Oina. She is early 20s and is very inquisitive, always asking questions, making sure to um, always be as nosy as possible, dig into it and try and get as much detail from you all as possible. She disembarks from the cart as well and sort of follows the... Um, the two humans and approaches the, the fungus and sort of just what is it? it looks disgusting and reaches out and the three of you on the cart and everyone else around can see that she makes the briefest of contact with it and re recoils her hand um, just a small exhale of breath more of surprise than anything and sort of almost like a static shock reaction um, and just kind of shakes her hand and Whew. no we shouldn't have anything to do with this the two humans um, Owen and Rebert the fighter guard nod and agree alright back on the carriage we move the three of them retake their positions and for the moment seem content to continue um, at this point we will start with um, with Allura just have a quick sort of description of whom, whom you may be for everyone please so um, Allura is a uh, halfling and she is a cleric of Hestia 
Um, fairly plain looking, I would say. Um, but she seems to be like friendly enough, like trying to chat with people whenever she can. Um, just trying to get to know people a little bit better. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Um, next we come over to Grant. Hi, yes, so, uh, Grant is a Earth Genasi monk who has decided to leave his temple high in the mountains to explore the lands and kind of look for his lost long brother as he uh, just explores and helps out where he can. Okay. And then we have Tulip. Uh, Tulip is a half-orc barbarian white hair, purple skin, wearing not quite fine clothes, but probably the finest common in, commoner clothes that he could find slash afford. Um, quite gentle features, has a flower in his top breast pocket, um, but also to contrast that he does have a big axe on his back and yeah, he's prone to bouts of forgetfulness. A bit clumsy, but also enjoys playing a tune on his flute. Nice, nice. Um, as Raybert re climbs back on his horse and Owen climbs back on the carriage, you can see um, Oina You know when you read something and then you doubt yourself. Oi, Oina, Jesus. Um, Oina is a bit more subdued. She's jumped back on the carriage, retaking her seat, but she's keep she's kind of hidden her hands away and under her cloak, and is definitely sort of retreated into the corner a bit. And she doesn't look up at the f at anybody. She's just staring at the floor. At that point, the carriage starts to move again. The horses have been the horses have been kind of kicked into action, and you continue down the road. And the f further down this road you go, it's fairly straight, quite wide. It's quite clearly a um, regularly trodden path um, but it's deserted at this point absolutely deserted there's trees lining it and overhanging the sun is just about breaking through it's about the middle of the day at this point um, but the, the overhang of the trees and the canopy is shielding you from much of the sun and also the heat meaning that despite it being middle of burning summer you're quite cool and the ground is quite damp the further you go however the more of this sludge and just almost bile is accumulating on the ground it's seeming to spread as you watch it you can just see it very slowly but um in fact grant and allura you can see tulip cannot um you can just see the gentle growth of this fungus like substance as the roots are sort of reaching out looking for somewhere to take plant take root take root essentially excuse me um, and the three guards who were kind of keeping a fair distance from the cart, you know, making sure there's a good perimeter, are closing in, making sure that they're staying on the well be well trodden path of the road and avoiding this substance as much as possible. There's 
maybe another 20 minutes pass where the civilians are keeping themselves to themselves. Um, there wasn't much chatter to begin with. However, now there's stone cold silence. The guards are keeping an eye out, looking and just eyes peeled, basically looking for threats. The um, Owen is the one leading this the carriage with you all on it and he's also keeping an eye but mostly again Allura and Grant you just see him occasionally glance back at Oina just you know some somewhat out of annoyance that she slipped past or slipped behind them and also suspicion he doesn't seem overly pleased eventually another 10 minutes pass by and you can see as you turn a fairly a fairly um, deep round right hand corner the canopy opens up and the sun starts beaming down and there's a a fairly modest by all standards um, town in front of you nothing spectacular nothing amazing but it you know serves a purpose the I mean sort of spurs the horses on some you know picking up the pace a little bit the the growth has just got more dense. It seems to have hit something close to critical mass at this point, where almost almost like there's not much chance of it even being able to get much worse here. Um, the first the first obvious thing is there's no movement no townspeople no hustle and bustle or anything like that it is just quiet Lura yes make a perception check for me Okay. Okay. The silence to you... It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> the silence to you is deafening. Um, as someone who travels a lot and has been to many towns of this size um, and even smaller to, you know, tend to people and, you know, do cleric -y stuff mm -hmm. um seeing a town this developed without people is always a red flag and you can see that in straight into the straight through the road into this town the walls of the buildings are just covered in vines of fungus fungal vines let's call them um now that's definitely not normal <laughs> i think it's safe to say um there are buildings here by the way that's why it's all blocked off um, can we move forward or? Yeah, yeah, you can move. You're free to move. The... I've got no vision. Oh, of course you haven't. Why wouldn't you? I do. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, the caravan itself pulls up. The road is less. It's not necessarily grown into the road. It is just um, sort of around it. 
However, there are sec there are big clumps of this stuff um, that seem to have just grown upwards into more bulbous shapes than actual um, sort of the flat surface that you've been seeing previously. Um, as you pull up and the carriage stops, um, there's a small cough. It's been, what, about 40 minutes since you last stopped? And Oina lets out a small cough and start you like um again allura you notice that she's shaking almost imperceptibly but once you're alerted to her coughing it kind of draws your attention and you can see it it's once you know it's one of those things once you notice it it's quite obvious you know um she hasn't looked up from the floor since she got back in the car. Um, the rest of the can I try and check on her, please? Um, you can try. You can try and approach her, and yeah, I want to try and see like if she's feeling unwell. <laughs> okay, um, you make your way uh, sort of from one end of the cart to the other. She's um, like stuck herself in this corner. Um, like literally pushed herself into the corner as far as she can go. Um, and as you approach, she looks her, she looks up, and you can just see her face is drenched in sweat. Um, her eyes have gone very bloodshot, and almost seem to have slightly receded into her head a little bit. Almost like she's something close to emaciated. And um, you can see that there's just saliva, like, drooling down her chin. And as she looks up, she sort of whimpers slightly, almost like she's trying to get words out, but just can't. Almost, like, she's struggling to breathe. The like, breaths are sort of very short and shallow. Um, is it a, a kind of illness that I've recognised or I've seen before? Or make a medicine check. Nice, nice. This is not something you recognise. You recognise the symptoms, or you would recognise the symptoms to common um, ailments. Um, equivalent to, you know, um, pneumonia or um, any kind of lung-based thing. Um, mm. Fevers like the flu, for example, um, you would recognize just because they're so common. Um, but this is a combination of Things that you just aren't familiar with. Like, there's nothing that you have learned in your training that would have this many severe symptoms like this. Okay. Um, I want to try and make her, like, take a drink from my water skin um, and try to emphasize to maybe like one of the guards or something that there's an issue over here all right which order are you doing that with and sort of desc describe to me how you're doing it so which which guard did you say it kind of picked up on there being an issue before um that was owen okay so he's probably the one that i would try and like wave over and flag down okay <clears throat> And then as he's making his way over is when I would try and, like, make a drink from the water skin. All right, so Owen's on the front of the cart, so you literally just tap him on the back. Oh, okay. Um, and as he turns to look... There are the three guards. As he turns <laughs> to look, um, 
his he sort of looks over his shoulder as you hand the water skin to Oina. His eyes kind of go wide a little bit in shock at just such rapid deterioration. Mm. Um, she takes the smallest swig and immediately just starts coughing. But despite having just taken a swig of water, it's a very dry cough. Um, rasping. Like, this is the cough of someone who has, like, basically got a really dry throat, a really chesty cough. Mm. Um, she drops the water skin and just kind of leans backwards over the back side of the cart and kind of just twists as she sort of makes herself fall and then lands on all fours and just launches herself forwards just like still struggling to breathe but also like trying to cry or you know weep I guess would be the better word it's like it's a very distressing sound she's making and she charges off uh, into the town sort of this way so she can't really breathe but she like runs okay mm -hmm. fantastic love that um Yeah, so Allura would, you know, turn to Owen and emphasize like we we need to help her. We need to figure out what's going wrong with her. Um yes, he agrees. Um he nods. Yes, we can't leave her behind. She is a paying passenger. I have guaranteed her safety even if we have already arrived. He turns to um um, Revert, the human guard, and Beleg, the halfling, who are the front two um, guards here. And he kind of indicates for them to follow, and they go charging off on their horse, or on their horses around the corner as well. Um, kind of, you know, you can see that they're a bit tentative because there are still. Um, there are still these huge kind of um, bulbous piles of fungus and gloop, for want of a better word. So they're kind of trying to slalom through those while also charging off after this woman who's just sort of found the energy to run off. Um, and as the sound of hooves dies down, there's just a moment of silence in the town. Just heavy breathing from this other civilians left behind but other than that there's there's just a few moments of silence tulip and grant what are you doing i'm probably considering my current flower that's in my breast pockets like wilting a little bit i'll probably be looking around for a new one but i'm guessing i probably won't find one not here no um the the ground like basically you can't really see it very well but currently anything that isn't this road is just coated in this in like this um this my brain has gone blank ooh goo <laughs> um this like basically there's just this fungus it's um maybe 6 inches thick and um unlike earlier where you could see like the roots of it kind of expanding reaching like octopus tentacles out for um where to go next this seems still and dormant 
However, there is something unsettling about the fact that it's just sat. You know. Mm. Well, I'm kind of like on the on the carpet looking out the window for it, and um, it's going to turn around and look and realise that there's less of us than there was. Where did everybody go? Weren't there more of us? Yeah. Uh, f well, as we, like, enter town, Grant would have kind of just appreciating the silence. Reminds him of home. And uh, is kind of not interacting or helping, really, but just keeping an eye on the woman and everything that happens with her at the time and then I guess watches her run off and then as Tulip says that I just look back at him and go yeah the woman that got out earlier she's uh ran from the car why run though we've got a car well, from the looks of it, she might be ill. Oh. Are you ill? I don't feel ill. Good. <laughs> How do you feel? A bit sad. Well, that's still not ill, so we're both good. Hmm. I'll just go back to looking at my flower. Okay. Um, at this point, Owen, it's been five minutes, and Owen starts to look a bit uncomfortable. He's shifting uncomfortably in his seat, and he turns to um, the last guard at the back and just beckons him forwards. Taron. Something is amiss here. There's nobody. None of the townsfolk that I've grown to know so well. I don't trust this. And um, Taron just replies with a eh, me either hmm. always so insightful Taron um, and he kind of rides forwards and <clears throat> again avoiding the big bulbous just amalgamations just steps forwards towards this um, small centre and looks down left where his guard friends went and to the right. I don't see anyone. Hmm. Owen turns to the three of you back in the back of the car. I don't like this. This isn't normal. No. This is usually quite a bustling town. There's upwards of 500 people that live here. Not to mention all the travelers and traders that come through here regularly. This is usually quite a profitable stop on the way. Hmm. Is there a florist? A, flo a florist? Yeah. Flowers. I know what a florist is, but this isn't really the time we have more pressing concerns. Don't you think? Yeah, you're, you're right. Just ignore him. He's been staring at that flower the whole journey. Hmm. Okay. It looks like she, did you see, did she actually touch the moss? I think so. Hmm. I saw a... Okay, then. I think I saw a black mark on the end of her finger where she touched it, but... 
it was too quick for me to get a good look. Yeah. On our way in, I swear, very hard to see, but I swear I saw the moss growing as if it was, in a sense, alive. I'm glad it's not just me that thinks that, because I noticed that too. Very unsettling. Maybe we should just turn around. And leave this mystery unsolved. What will we tell the city? What will we tell everyone when we reach the city? Oh. Well, at least we'll be there to, to tell them. Well, I mean, looks like no one else is coming back. Give them time. Tulip, you do make a point, but if we could stop whatever has clearly happened to this town from spreading even more, it'd be better to at least try now. And if not, then we should go get help. Yeah, but what can we do? That is indeed the question. What can we do? Um, are the are the horses okay? They're walking through this. So the sludge is different from the moss, right? Or... It's kind of the same thing. <clears throat> right. It all seems to be the same sort of substance, but for example, here where it's settled and it's quite thick, it seems very dry, almost like. Um, almost like it could potentially be hollow. But the further out of the town you got, the more damp and moist and um, sort of thinly um, spread it was. Right, and the horses seem fine because they're like walking through it for like a while. They, the the draft horses on the carrot on the carriage seem too as depressing as it is, they seem too downtrodden and defeated to really care. The um excuse me, the horses of the guards did take a bit of convincing. But um they're kind of trained to you know, deal with sort of unfavorable situations and so they do eventually they are eventually persuadable now are we currently carrying on moving or are we stop waiting for the other people you are currently stopped in the city in the town like basically where you are now is where you're stopped okay. well either we turn around or i don't know keep going through i don't... You want to find your friends, don't you? Yes. They've been... They have been good companions to me over the years. I do not wish to leave them behind if I can. Mm. They are, of course, just paid guards. It's what they're there for, but... I'd rather... They lived, if possible. Yeah, that would be nice. As he says that, I, uh, Grant stands up. And he's like, I'll help you. Anything that wrecks the land is not okay with me. So we're gonna... What, walk through this? Right, why don't you see what it's like? You're well, tougher than most. Okay. Kind of weird considering you're bigger than me, but... Yeah, but look at your skin. Like, I'm just... I'm flesh in that. I'm not made of stone. I'm just grey. Yeah, look at you. And he's going to knock on your chest. Yeah, you don't hear, like, 
the hollow stone that you probably would think. <laughs> it's more just a gasp. It's just a little like, Hey. <laughs> yeah. Right. The paths seem clear. Um, I turn and look at Alora. You were the closest one to that woman out of all of us. Mm -hmm. Did how are you feeling? Are they showing any signs of spread? Um, well, she's not well, but d didn't seem anything too out of the ordinary until she ran off. Hmm. Did it look like she had the strength to run off? I wouldn't have thought so. No. Hmm. That's interesting. I say for now. If we do want to try and find where she went and the other guards, stick to the clear areas and the roads mainly. Don't go poke in the greenery. Seems like it's the way to get ill. Owen's nodding. I agree. That seems a surefire way to get yourself into a mess. Why don't you throw one of your things at it? I have no things. What are you on about? <laughs> All you can see is my trident at the moment. Alright, oh, sorry. Can you blow one of those things? You've got blow things, haven't you? Um, yes, but I am limited on what I can uh, use. You, you can get it back afterwards. No. The whole point is we don't touch the grass. Hmm. Okay, let's go. Laura, are you joining us? Sure, why not? You might be able to tell us what's happening to her, the woman once we find her. Well, I, I'm hoping the guards that went and followed her will already find her, but she definitely needs some medical assistance outside of my skills, I believe. Okay. And then I'll just walk off the carriage and walk around. As, uh, basically avoiding every p bit of greenery, staying in the middle of the path. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Taran, the goblin guard, is still kind of is still mounted, and is still sort of in place down here. He is partly keeping guard, but also, you know looking out for his companions as the three of you approach don't go too far if you if you get in trouble call out and I'll come and save you we will good don't die I might not call, but I've got my flute. So if you hear rapid flute, can you come help? I'll listen out for the flute. Thank you. Like I said, if you need help, come and just call out and I will come and help you. I just give him a nod as I walk by. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so Chloe, you can move with mouse with keyboard, don't worry, but with keyboard. Yes. With mu use keyboard move. That how yeah. that how word work. Arrow keys. <laughs> or you can click and drag. Arrow keys is what I tried to say. <laughs> <laughs> Instead English fail. Um as you turn the corner, you can see um that this building to the right has been had its door smashed open um from the outside in um currently there's just two planks of wood sort of dangling loosely from the brackets and the rest is just smashed on the floor um this building directly here that you would have been in front of looks to be um a small library and um again the door this time seems to have been 
broken outwards. Um, the wreckage of the the wreckage of the door is just strewn um, in the courtyard. The other doors that you can see, so this stone tower here, this stone building behind where you would be now, um, this big building here is a tavern. Um, it doesn't have a name. It's just clearly different. Dive. It's clearly um, distinguishable as a tavern, just from the look and feel of the place. And over here um, seems to be a barricaded building. The door is barricaded quite significantly. Um, that's what you all notice, or at least two of you notice, as soon as you turn the corner. Does it look like it's freshly been broken into, or does it look like it's old? Make an intelligence check for me. Just, you know, to kind of try and... As she's doing that, can I look around for if there's any shrubbery or of this vines or moss that's growing around? Has any of that, like, blocking any of the doors? Um, make an investigation check, please. Um, Allura, it's difficult to tell how long it's been like this. Um, the, they see, it seems to have just been grown over. Almost. Okay. Um, so it's kind of difficult to tell, ju judging from the remains of the doors. Um, cool. uh, Grant, there's no plant matter or anything shrubbery, shrub, shrubby growing at all. It's either compacted compacted dirt, which is what your which is what the road's made out of, or um, it's currently covered in the fungus, basically. Okay. Um. Everybody, make perception checks for me. That tracks. <laughs> okay, you're all you're doing so well. <laughs> it's nice playing in a game where everyone's perception is quite low for a change. I'm busy. I I, I was I was tempted <laughs> tempted to give you disadvantage, but I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost asked for it. <laughs> um, Grant, for the faintest second, while you're kind of looking around seeing if there's any um anything growing you swear you hear someone or something crying distinguishing direction and distance is almost impossible but um you you hear like a very loud sob and then another one, and then the sound kind of dies down again. You lose, you lose it in the air, and then um, you lose it completely. None of the rest of you hear it. Okay, as we're walking, then I'll like kind of the moment I hit hear it I'll stop with my arms out and it's like guys I will think the woman's close oh okay maybe not I just swear I just heard someone crying or whimpering do you know where it might have come from no it's as if it was everywhere and nowhere at all 
Oof, I don't like that. <laughs> Philip looks up. Is there anything above us? Oh, uh, sorry. I, I I thought you said just meant you would like you've looked up from looking at the flower. So I was just kind no, of no, no. waiting for the sentence to continue. In my looking head, up. I assume Tulip just actually looked up at the sky for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't make that connection. Sorry. Um, That's right. In the sky, it's a very sunny day, um, and you happen to look up at exactly the point where the sun is. And so for about three seconds, you're staring at the sun. And then as you look down, you're just dazed. You've just got like the sun in your eyes, basically. Oh, okay. I was about to ask, I was going to peek my head in this door as well, just to see if... I mean, you can still if you want. <laughs> okay, as I'm dazed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk in a bit further than I was expecting to then in that case, because I'm a bit dazed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just because I sort of smashed in already. All right, so you take like sort of three steps in. Yeah, basically until I, until I bump into this, or I'm no longer dazed, I guess. All right, so they, those two things happen about the same time. Yeah. Um, the first thing you notice when your eyes adjust again is that the room is full of this kind of fungus. Okay. Um, on the floor, on all the surfaces. And the second thing you notice is that once you bump into the um, kind of workbench in the middle of the room, mm -hmm. the fungus that you've disturbed from your steps and from bumping into it is now just emitting dust. Okay, if I see the dust, I'll probably recoil a bit and run back out a little bit worried mm -hmm. uh, make a constitution saving throw for me oh i will there's lots of dust in there uh can i throw how do i do it from here i, I missed the top buttons up here um I missed them. so it should just just click the word constitution on your couch sheet oh save and throw there sorry yeah Oh, no, it's all right. Fifteen. Excuse me. You come out of the um, building, coughing, spluttering, and feeling very sick and lethargic all of a sudden. Um, Grant being closer, but Allura sort of keeping an eye you can see now kind of following um tulip out of this building are just bigger than dust but you know not by much they're still fairly microscopic are just these um almost teardrop shaped spores that are just following him out of the building and he is absolutely Caked in it. Meant to take a step back. Oh, danger! Danger! Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna run back. Um. He. When we uh, when we walked past this well earlier, could we see a bucket in it? Yeah. Okay. If it's not attached, Alora would like to run back to the well, grab a bucket of water, and run back and just throw it all over him okay um you start pumping those halfling legs and you've got the bucket that's almost <laughs> as big as your torso full of water make a strength check for me <laughs> with advantage because adrenaline my shirt's off by now 11 um you make it four steps with the bucket in your hand and then you just start dragging it because it's just too heavy and as you get closer to Tulip, his, his shirt has come off. His um, chiseled body is, I assume it's chiseled, you know. Please feel free to correct me, but, you know. Yeah, he's not let himself go yet. <laughs> yeah. His well-looked-after well body is just exposed, or top half anyway. And you just yeet the water over him. And <clears throat> there's a moment of shock, Tulip, where... Um, 
that kind of usual feeling you get before you forget what happens kind of starts overwhelming you slightly and then you take a breath and the sickness disappears the lethargy wears away and you are now just wet wow well, thank you but I, I think you're the you're the you're a good you're a good thinking person aren't you I try. Oh. Do you feel okay? Do you do you feel like you can breathe okay? Yeah. I think I feel fine. But and I look down and my, my shirt's all wet and my flowers falling out of my, my top. <laughs> oh. I'll put it back on anyway, my shirt. Get pick up the flower, put it in the pocket. Probably needed some water anyway. Exactly. How is it supposed to grow if you don't feed it water? Mm. <laughs> and no. then he thinks, sorry, he thinks that in the future I should probably have a little bit of soil in my pocket and then put the flower in. For another time. <laughs> sorry. Go okay. No, okay. okay. As Tulip has amazing ideas every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just kind of stood by, fearful of any of these dust particles that have come out and started, like, following him in a sense and trying to see how far they actually followed him before they started to settle on the ground again. Some of them disperse into the air, <clears throat> kind of taken by the hot air and just rise. Um, and others do especially ones that have as Tulip sort of came bursting out of the building and took his shirt off they do fl sort of float to the floor and settle but as they do you can immediately start seeing them kind of just propagating into this um, compact soil and just um not growing, but embedding. Okay. I probably wouldn't recommend going in that one. Well, well maybe any of them, I don't. I'm not going to go in anymore. Probably. It was extremely bad luck, Tulip, but you gave us some um, pretty good knowledge the I'm moss not... seems dormant until you disturb it so we should be fine as long as we don't mess with it okay and then from from this point on tulip's going to be kind of like over exaggerating tiptoeing around okay you're like stuck in mud kind of like you're moving tiptoeing. at half movement speed right now Okay. <laughs> because, you know, you're being very careful about where you're putting your feet. Mm hmm. Um, I will also say that you are moving um, stealthy. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, because, you know, you're being careful. Quite delicate. Like a flap. No, no. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to be taking the lead, though. I'm just going to be. Like looking like I'm looking for things, but letting the others kind of like make progress. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be keeping my eye on Tulip. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, make. Roll a medicine check for me. And it's just going to kind of. Be a like a long term thing while you keep watching him. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. It's more, it's it's like a, you know, you're keeping an eye and making, sort of, looking out for symptoms type thing. Yep. All right. If that's the plan, I guess I will lead us. And let's try and find this woman before any more mishaps happen. 
Okay, just be careful. Before I s start moving, I'll turn back to Tulip. No more bill going in buildings, okay? Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I turn back around and then I start heading back down the road then. I never yeah, thought I'd see the day where Josh is the sensible one in a group. <laughs> um, you know, pigs can fly at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grant, make a perception check for me. Right. Ooh, nice. You make it to this building that you're kind of next to, and you can hear the cr sobbing again. This time, it's not loud. It's not... It's not... overly attention-grabbing, but... you've kind of been passively listening out for it the whole time, since you heard it before. And now... you can... hear something... not in this building, but in this area beyond where you are now okay um, kind of down here somewhere um also oops sorry you notice drag marks on the floor there's kind of where the top layer of dust or dirt has been disturbed on the ground and just dragged off into different directions in front of you um, heading in this direction and this direction how big are the drag marks are they like just drag lines like I couldn't tell what was them or are they like as if some like a body made the drag marks <laughs> Um, make an intelligence check for me. Please. Uh, which one's my intelligence? There it is. Blimey. This... <laughs> if you... didn't know any better, this looks like something has been pulled over and immediately dragged because there's no impact marks on the ground so it looks like a body of some form has been dragged over and pulled away um, but whether that's the body of a horse or a person or a just a box it's difficult to tell it's just big enough to be one of them. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will kind of stop just in front of them then and turn to the other two. Right, guys. There are, if you've not noticed, right behind me, drag marks. They look fresh. So, let's be on our toes. Keep an eye out. Tulip, I see you're already on your toes. I am, Good. look. And I've also heard the sobbing again in this area. So we are heading right. Right as in right now or right as in the right way? The, the second one, Tulip. We're going in the correct direction. Okay. Is it the right direction if there's danger there, though? That is a good question. We won't know that unless it happens. Right. Well, after you, then. Well, let's... Let's go. I suppose we actually, do you want to go to where the second drag mark goes, or do you want to go to where the drag mark that goes to the crying as well? 
I mean, we should probably check out both if we can, right? Yeah, but my question is, are we more worried about the severely the woman, and we can follow that drag uh, drag mark, hoping the crying is her, or just follow the other one to see where it goes? Well. The crying might be more beneficial. I don't know. Let's just find. We're here to. We, we, we're going to find people. Then we can get back on the cart. Then we can go. Um, Allura's yeah. face is going to like light up for a moment, like like she's just remembered something. Um, when she backflipped off the cart. The, the girl couldn't cry, like she was trying and she couldn't make any noise. So I'm now kind of concerned that this might not be her. Well, if she is sick and she randomly gained the energy to run, and you say she couldn't, <laughs> and now we're hearing crying and she couldn't, she might be i don't even know what that stuff would do to someone okay we'll go for the crying to see if it is someone in need if it turns out to be this woman that was traveling with us be on guard as who knows what's happened i'll stay at the back i'll i'll keep an eye out back here very brave of you. I'm ready. And I pull out my flute and get ready to <laughs> squeal for help. <laughs> I kind of do that, like, confused, like, side to the head dog look where I'm just confused at the flute. And I'm like, okay. Turn around and then carry on up to, I guess, where it starts to. I don't know how much this is mm -hmm. walkable on before. Um. So, as you get to the edge of the grass verge, it's quite a good indication of where the um, thick fungus starts. The thick fungus Ew. layer starts. Um, and it's basically... It kind of gradually builds. It doesn't. It's not like a sheer sort of edge. It gradually builds up. Um, but what you can see is that this whatever it was being dragged through has disturbed it and basically gouged a path through it um um the second thing you notice is that while that's beneficial um the sort of fungus itself internally looks like layers of lasagna where it kind of grows and then there's a f sort of um like almost like a film or a sort of a top to it and then it just starts growing again but either denser or sort of gloopier different and it seems to evolve at each stage to something different and there's maybe an inch per layer I don't like it. But the other way, there's no, there's less fungus. You're right there, Tulip. There is less fungus. <laughs> also, it only felt a bit more weird when I breathed the stuff in. So, if you do knock it, maybe don't, don't breathe in for a bit. That actually is very useful. Tulip gets a bit of a headache. <laughs> Some places I am the smart one. Okay, I, I turn around. Is uh, the bit that's been, I guess, removed wide enough for me to walk through normally, or do I have to go, kind of go through sidewards? It seems without... to be about two feet wide so you've got plenty of room to walk through by yourself 
Um, okay. But it's single file. Okay. I will... You guys, if you want, I'm happy to go check as far as this outline or path has been made for us in a sense. If you want to wait here, if you do want to come, stay close behind me, but behind me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye and I'll put the flute to my lips. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Panicked flute right. squealing incoming. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'll um, slowly make my way. Okay. Are you stealthing or are you just sort of, you know, just going slowly? No, I'm going slowly. I'm not full on stealthing. Okay. Um, Allura's going to follow at a distance as well. All right. <clears throat> um, as you approach the door, the door is shut. Um... The drag marks go beyond this building and continue off the map that way. Um, but there's enough for for at least um, for at least you, Grant, to you know jump onto the porch where it's not quite as built up. There seems to be a, seems to have been disturbance here recently. Okay. What about the uh, crying slash whimpering? Is that picked up or? Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems to be somewhere inside this building. Hmm. I will, before doing anything, turn back to Alora and. She's in talking distance, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not like shouting. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll turn around and tell her that the crying is coming from the house, but. The path leads on. I think we should, for now, see what the noise is. Sure. Um, you go ahead. I'll stay out here <laughs> so that I can keep an eye on Tulip at the same time. Okay. And if, if... I hear any problems, I'll come running in. Be careful, it is a bit of a gap to get to the door. Just what are you trying to say? Just... We don't want any more people falling ill. That's what I'm trying to say. And I will make a jump then to the door. Okay. You jump onto the door, onto the um, steps basically outside the door. Um... A, a quick investigation of the door can see that while it is shut, it um, isn't fully locked. You can see that it is um, um, it is you know, it's not latched on properly, so it's not fully shut, I guess. It's difficult to explain. Um, so we're basically, <clears throat> if I jumped and hit into the door, the door kind of swings open a little. Yes. But you're a monk, so that kind of thing is, you know, unlikely. For you. <laughs> okay, yeah. <clears throat> um, there is, <clears throat> excuse me, there isn't enough of a gap to see through the door, however, but you can hear quite clearly that the crying slash sobbing is coming from inside. Um, you don't hear any movement. You can just hear, you can just hear crying. Okay. I will gently, like, tap on the door to see if it, well, because of it not being la latched, to push it open, so hopefully it doesn't squeak, and I will try and go in stealthy. Okay. Um, roll the stealth check for me, please. Oh, okay. I like how you're surprised. 13. All right. You open the door as slowly as you can, and re remarkably and thankfully, there's no squeak to it. It is just opens quietly. Um, the right-hand side of the room, so this side, 
is what you see first. The door opens um, inwards this way. Okay. Uh, so it opens. That'd be like way. here if I stepped in. Yeah, that's like a really bad way of doing it, but you get it. You get the idea. So this is the side of the room you see first. Um, wait, I can do it like this. Never mind. No, I can't. Um, <clears throat> and that side is clear. As the door opens more, you can see against this sort of back door. It's not like an actual outside door. It is an inside door. But this door at the back of the room, curled up in a ball, is um, the lady that you have been chasing through the through the town. Um, Oina. Yes, Oina. Oina. She doesn't. And... She doesn't seem to notice you as you walk in. Okay. Uh, how does she like? Look, splash is acting it like where she is at the moment. She's um kind of fetal position, but sat up like sat up. Um, head kind of tucked into her knees. And you can hear the sobbing sort of emanating from her. Okay. Make a perception will... check. Ooh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you step into the room and you can see her. And you can hear the sobbing. You can see her um, curled up in the corner. What you don't see in time is that there's no movement of the body. Um, and before you really kind of have chance to take in what's happening... Um, oh, actually, please hold a moment. I changed some things and now I'm... Quick, where's my reaction fireball? I'll blow that face up. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Um, sort of jump. So the head moves slightly, with no provocation, no trigger to it. The head just kind of starts moving up slowly, and as it moves, you can hear. Um. sobbing continues and you can see um, Oina's face just completely blank just sobbing and then she sort of jumps up onto her feet and dives at you okay I need you to roll initiative please yeah <laughs> um Yeah. Okay. You as she dives at you, you do react. You get chance to um you you cut your kind of mind goes clear. Um your training kicks in. Um it is your turn. If I of course begin combat. Now, because how are we saying she dived at me? Did she jump over the table? Or? She, so you could see her over the table. Um, yeah. She's curled up in the corner, but she jumps up from sitting to sort of like a crouching stand and then just dives oh, okay. and launches herself over the table using the hands to vault over. Um, now that she's fully revealed to you, you can see that... Um, from her fingertip that touched the mold, touched the um, sort of like mossy growths, um, it, her ho whole entire right arm is just covered in fungus. Like, and not just any fungus, but not, not just like generic fungus, but there's mushrooms growing as well. There's um, the same roots that you saw on the ground that were growing outwards constantly. And those roots are what are sort of spreading onto her torso. Um, 
you can see them expanding over her torso that just hasn't taken full root yet. Um, her eyes are completely clouded over and the same sort of sunken that you saw previously when she ran away. And her skin has just gone that kind of clammy, very pale white um, of someone who isn't very well. And she's okay. like mid vault at you, mouth wide open, and you can see the um, little roots kind of in the back of her throat. Yeah, I'm definitely not staying here. Uh, I'm going to spend a key point to uh, you step of the wind and disengage. Okay. So I'm going to go out here and then jump back onto the path if I can. Mm hmm. I will immediately look at Alora and shout that I found her, but she jumped at me. I think she might be dead. Let's get out of here. Uh, you hear a whistle in the background. <laughs> <laughs> panicked, um, panicked flute shrieking. <laughs> I will use a bit of my movement to get up to Alora before it becomes where I can't pass her. And I will you can, turn around. You can get through friendlies, you just can't stop in their space. Okay. I also I currently can't move at the moment because of the initiative. Yes. Yeah. It, it's fine then. I walk up to Alora and. I won't go past her, but because of me being in charge at the moment, in a sense, I will t turn around and can I hold an attack? Yes. I want to hold uh, throwing my trident at her as soon as she comes out. Okay. Okay. And that is my turn. That's your turn. Um, there you go. Are the two of you going to react by joining initiative, or are you going to wait until you kind of assess the situation more? Um, I'll join initiative. Okay, so right-click your character, and then there's like a sh two swords and a shield button, mm -hmm. and then just go to the combat tracker and roll the dice. I think I would as well. All right. Oh. <laughs> That's a really bad first initiative. Okay, Tulip, you react quick enough as Grant comes um, running out of the building. Um, Allura's still kind of a bit taken aback. Let's change the music. I feel like with that, he's just, instead of fighting, he's sped up on the flute. <laughs> it's just getting really shrill slightly further panicked <laughs> yeah it's just getting more and more shrill and like um urgent sounding yeah i'd also be looking around to see if there's anything else reacting all right roll the perception check for me mm -hmm. bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. 11. All right. You currently can't see anything. I'm blind. Not that kind of anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're currently unable to see any other threats. Okay. I should say. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, would I... Okay, so would you count me as, like, blowing the thing as my action? No, no, because you were already doing it. Okay. Um, in that case, um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get a hand axe in my hand, mm -hmm. just ready. And like, if anything was to come out of that house that looked like it was gonna hurt, I'd, I'd unleash a hand axe. All right. Okay. Um, so the house that um, Grant just came out. Of. Yeah, he seemed a bit panicked about that, okay. so I think the same might come out. Seems legit. Um, wait, no. Did that wrong. Um, 
you all watch as the person you knew as Oina comes kind of lumbering out of the building sort of still standing but her arms are kind of flailing to the, at the side and um, she has a kind of slight bend to her knees that um, isn't necessarily human you know like not what's the word not very um, civilized I guess it's not really the word I was looking for but it still works um, and you can all see just like the state of her her arm just covered in fungus fungal growths and roots and her, her eyes just completely sunken back and clouded over skin clammy and white um, and as she opens her mouth she, um, she lets out a not a particularly ear splitting scream but enough that it kind of echoes around you but um, Tulip and Grant you do get your um, held, held attacks uh, can I wait until it gets closer yeah yeah you can like, I want to wait until okay, so if I can judge that I get a disadvantage if it's more than 20 foot that's all okay okay Cool, cool, cool. I mean, yeah, I can't even throw mine unless it's 20 foot. You're within 10 feet. Good, does that mean I can still throw it? So, for thrown weapons, you have um, two numbers. So you've got 20 feet and 60 feet. 20 feet, you can throw your trident with straight rolls. Um, oh, okay. Anything, up to, fine, anything between 20 to 60 feet is with disadvantage. And then you can't throw it any further than 60 feet. I will find a way, but okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, just roll for an attack. Um, 21 hits. The first hit. It's and then... Good first attack roll. Yeah, I mean, like... good first attack roll, bad first damage Hang roll. Hang on. Don't I get, like, a bonus because it's my key... My key weapon. Is it not what's already in chat, the four piercing? Um, it no, because no. plus four is from strength. Ah, gotcha. Okay, because I know I have the key sense style, don't I? And it's a key, key, Kensai weapon. So you've got Kensai shot. You, when you, you... can use a bonus action. Oh, it's, okay, it's a bonus action. I can roll an extra. So. Yeah, this is, this is your held action. Yeah, no, that's fine then. So, that's fine five you throw your trident and it does like make contact firmly in the chest um what both trident like um outside prongs go under the collarbones and the main one goes straight through the sternum um and now your trident is just hanging um kind of embedded in the chest of this um this person okay um it's still my turn. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, it's my turn. Why am I waiting? Um, right. For some reason, the um measurement thingies aren't working. That's weird. Right for me. This one works. That but sounds like it's... You're an observer. No. Oh. I don't know. It's weird. Um, but anyway, I can still do this. I can't do that, apparently. <laughs> 15 feet from it, so in a, in a cone, so the two of you, um, Grant and Allura, I need you to make constitution saving throws of 13, not 6. I'm not exactly why it says, sure why it says 6, but... Cool. Do you want me to just do it normally or press the button? Um, the... Just press the button if you oh. get over 6. Then. If you get over 13, then you've succeeded. Okay. Grant, you are fine. Allura, this... 
You take eight points of necrotic damage. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see the description, but if you can, just ignore it because it's not quite the right thing. Okay. Um, but you basically get completely enveloped in the same sort of um, teardrops shaped spores that you saw previously. Um, the roar that the person let out just echoes through the alleyway that you're in and through the town and then just emits this massive cloud of spores that Grant manages to cover up and hold his breath. It doesn't quite affect him. You're taken aback by this. Um, and sort of instinctive inhalation of breath in surprise and you start feeling them um, dig down your throat. Um, a feeling of lethargy and sickness starts taking control. Yeah, basically. On seeing it not like coming out and rushing can i throw my axe now um you can do okay i know it might still move but i'm right it's just gonna stay on there that'd be a disadvantage yes um 25 feet you know 13 is its armor class so you, you hit Ooh, I'll take it. And then... Six points. Ben. Nice. Better than the trident. <laughs> <laughs> um, your hand axe goes... Woof, 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 as Allura is coughing and spluttering and feeling a bit sick. And Grant is currently knelt down, um, sort of shielding himself. That's when your hand axe comes flying over him flying over Allura and lands squarely in the shoulder basically in in between the gap of the trident and you can just hear the crunch as the collarbone shatters and snaps um, and your hand axe is now also embedded in her sort of chest area um, nice. she reels back and starts kind of f favoring her right hand side that isn't quite so injured which happens to be her fungal side um but her left arm is basically just hanging loose and limp now okay. we come to allura um i'm gonna straight up move as far as i can away from here mm -hmm. um so 25 feet if i go back this way um, Actually, I'll have to use. Yeah, so use the green like line. So you, you can use. You can. Like, control, click, drag, and then click yeah. again to measure oh, out. Oh, okay. Like, distance that way. So you could get to here still by going that way. Okay, yeah, I'll do that then. So. Up to right, here. Ruby, yeah. Um, that's still keeping, um, like, keeping out of the. Um, grossness you know <clears throat> yeah uh and i am going to use cure wounds on myself mm -hmm. of course you're a cleric <laughs> no problem eh? there we go oh. nice so just a question mm-hmm with it being spores and dust and stuff, am I still sick or yes. have I just like, okay, cool. Um, you feel healthier overall, but mm -hmm. you can still tell that there's something fundamentally wrong. Yep, cool. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be me. All right, we'll come back to Grant. Uh, the law has sort of opened up a path for me to be able to escape as well. Mm -hmm. He is very much wanting to go grab his trident, <laughs> but he he know he can, can come to his senses and he will. I'm on the wrong thing. I will follow the line back to be on the path. So 
I'll be here on the edge of it. I will turn around and without hesitation I will pull out a tube which I've been keeping under like my clothes and it is my blowgun. Okay. That misses. <laughs> you take out your blowgun and you go, and it just goes ding, into the wooden wall behind the creature, behind the person. I pull the blowgun down and look where it lands, and I'm just like, shit. And <laughs> then I'm just, that, yeah, that's my go. <laughs> I'm just disappointed at my own self. <laughs> Julep. Um. Hmm. Any sign of anyone coming to help after I blew the thing? Make a perception check. Not that you can tell, no. No, okay. Um, right. I'm not a bit concerned still by this, but I'm gonna move five foot forward, pull out my other hand axe, and try to throw that one before backing off. Um, second hand axe. Is it a second hand axe or is it a second hand axe? Second hand. <laughs> mm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, 16, 16 hits. Hit. Ooh. <laughs> 10. Ooh, roll a d4 for me. Okay, there wasn't really much point in asking you to roll a d4 because I only needed you to roll a one anyway. But, so, <laughs> you know, for the tension, for the drama. Um, you throw your second hand axe and this time it makes contact with um, the right hand side, which is where the fungus is growing. And as it just impacts into the body, it just severs a whole bunch of the roots that seem to be taking hold. And um, as the arm goes limp also the body kind of sways as it stands and then falls and as it does um it just goes and spores um, back up yeah you're fine it, i can't draw oh, circles for some reason that's Great. cool i'd still back up even if it didn't look that much yeah I do love the blood splatter that's left. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm. It's not well, letting me like have to draw that. things or do anything, but fine. Oh. You're just not allowed to do anything. Clean. Yeah, apparently. Uh, we're going to have to clean our weapons after that. Do you want to grab my uh, axes if you're going to get your stick? You're so brave for someone so big, aren't you? <laughs> I, I, I threw my axes all right, actually, I thought. Yes, I will admit, you were helpful in this endeavor, and I thank you for your service. I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> we were in this together. Um, then I'm going to do another tune on my thing, which in my head means don't worry about coming, but it probably would just think, make him think we're still in danger. Okay. <laughs> As soon as he starts replaying, I'm going to slowly make my way, trying to, I guess, wait for any of them. I'm assuming you meant there were for there to be spores. We can't make the X for still in combat. Yes. Uh, yes, you are. Back down the green line as close as I can until I'm pretty sure it looks safe to go grab the weapons. Of course, you would do that if Allura, um, as... Tulip kind of sends Grant to get his axes while he gets his trident. Behind right. you, you hear steps. 
Oh no. And another, this time, less human looking person. This time, it's more fungus than human or person. This creature Ugh. is just completely covered head to toe. Um, almost like a full body suit of just growths. Um, tips of the fingers are um, roots and tendrils. The mouth is just overflowing, almost like um, literally like it's just got roots growing out of its mouth and just hanging loose, but they're wriggling slightly. And mm -hmm. its eyes, there's no eyes. There are more roots and you can just see it shambling and its head's looking from side to side um, as it's walking towards you. Um, but like its head's back side to side, but it is stepping directly in your way. Um, and because it's a surprise round for it, it does get a slam attack against you. God damn. Uh, for a 21. Oh. That hits. Mm -hmm. uh, you take seven points of bludgeoning damage as um, as you're turning, it just impacts into your chest. Um, you manage to take the brunt of the impact on your um, armor and because of your armor, it doesn't get to um, like implant its um, roots in you, but it takes the wind out of your sails slightly. However, that is a disgusting sentence. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, it is your turn. You can retaliate. Um, first things first, I would like to. Um, oh, shit. If I move, it's going to have an opportunity attack, isn't it? Yep. Ah. Do you have anything that, yeah, that can do that or. Just action disengage. Um, no, I don't have anything that can do it for me. Uh, that's fine. Um, that's fine. She says, resigned. <laughs> it's it's to fine. Her fate. It is what it is. Squishy, you'll be fine. Hmm. Um. Right, so it's within within five feet of me, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, right, okay. Um, no, I feel like that's a bad idea. <clears throat> um, so, I am going to cast Guiding Bolt on it. Um, ranged spells within five feet have disadvantage. Oh, do they? Guiding Bolt is a spell attack, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. Yeah, so it'd be disadvantage. Uh, okay. Back to plan C. <laughs> um. <laughs> we bypassed A and B. <laughs> yeah. C, we bypassed. D, E, we F, G. <laughs> we missed out. Started with H. Now we're back at C. Um, I am going to cast Inflict Wounds. Nice. Um, and I'm going to upcast it as well. Ooh, tasty. Uh, so attack, normal. Oh, thank God. That hits. Okay. Damage, normal. Oh, thank God. <laughs> So yeah, Allura's just gonna like panic, reach out and try and like poke this thing that's just walked up to her and smacked her and cast inflict wounds and just start like screaming at it. Okay. Um, a few things happen here. One of those things is not the damage you inflicted. Another one of those things is the constitution saving throw you have to make for touching it. I knew it wouldn't do new cross and necrotic. Fuck's sake. Okay. 
constitution saving throw. Okay. This time, are you wearing gloves? Uh, yeah, I would be. Yeah, so you, you reach out and the gloves manage to take most of the front of um, the, like, the contact. Yeah. And you feel the spell um, channel through your fingertips into the creature. And it doesn't seem to react. And there's a moment of kind of panic where you just think, oh, crap. Why didn't that work? And then you feel a tingling in your fingertips. But nothing happens. Beautiful. <clears throat> um, yeah, I can't do anything as a bonus action, so that's going to be me. It's now the um, creature's turn. Um, yeah, this guy's going to use his... Um, I need both Tulip and um, Allura to make constitution saving throws, please. DC 13. Uh... Okay, nice. good. You've learned from your mistake, Allura, and Tulip, you've seen this before. So both of you, deep breaths, you see the mouth open, the scream, the shriek emits and the ten the the um tendril like roots just start flailing around wildly and spores just start floating out but deep breaths and holding 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 the spores don't seem to take hold the creature in frustration is going to Uh, it's just going to stand there because that's all it can do. Grant. Okay. I would say, as I was initially told to go grab the weapons, I would uh, took this step before hearing the slam of Alora and turned to have seen this new fungus zombie, I guess. And I'm looking back at my trident, one in it. And it's, it's calling to me, but no. I know these people that I've been traveling with need my help. So I will use my uh, blowgun again. <laughs> <laughs> Since yeah, I'm in range. You can blow it. And hope. Yeah. That hits. Two. Nice. Damage is damage. I forgot how good the blowgun was. And that is me being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. You send off your blowgun. And it impacts directly in the top of the, in like the middle of the creature's skull. And it just kind of barely reacts. Yeah, I assume it would just be in there. And then, because I have it and I can do it, I'm going to use my bonus action to use my Kenshin shot. And because my blowgun is a Kenshin weapon, mm -hmm. I can use it. So. Uh, yep. As so, long as it hits, I get an extra 1d4 on whatever. You're not does. wrong. Just don't miss. God damn it, Josh. What <laughs> did I just it. say? What did I just say? <laughs> I said, specifically, just don't miss. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you tried. Yeah, does that one go anywhere in the significant do I see where it goes, in a sense? Um, off into the distance. Great. Lovely. That ne one's never coming back. 
as I'm missing kind of frustration, I know I need my uh, pride at the back. So I will head down the path to where the cre I guess the creature died on the porch slash. No, it stepped out, so it was in the um in the fungal, oh, okay. in like the fungal sheet, let's say. And are the weapons like in it on it, or do I would I have to go digging? Now you can reach yours. Okay, well in that case, I'll pull my trident out so I have it. But where are the hand axes? They're still there. You can see them, but it would take there are a feat of immense core strength to grab them. Okay, well, because of me getting my trident back, and that's why I was after, I will end my turn here and spend it trying to figure out <laughs> how to get them back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tulip. Uh, Tulip's shoulders kind of sag down a little bit, resigned to doing what he think he might have to do. Um, grabs his great axe and starts shambling towards, no longer tiptoeing, towards the zombie. Um, and I'll just quickly say, uh, Allura, hold, hold your breath. And then I will go into a rage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, that rage is there. But I'll just be like, that, no, no. No, and then start raging, and then just quiet. Uh, that's the wrong one. Boop, boop, boop. Look at you flashing. Oh, my... rage that's flash. That's a cool effect. Um, and then I'm going to recklessly attack. Okay. This thing. Reckless attack. Um. Cool. Oof, so close. 25 definitely hits. String. Um, oh, you t both of you guys get a D6 bloodthirst dice for damage for the next six minutes. You can use it once. Mm -hmm. What's the range on that, though? 60, 60 feet. feet. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. that's fine then. So um, you basically, for one attack within the next, is it six minutes or is it six? Is it just a minute? One minute. One minute, 60 seconds. Yeah. Cool. Um, you get an extra d6 on an attack for a um, minute. And I get one as well, don't I, if I want you, to? You do. That's pretty nice. That's a shame on that roll, though. Uh, it's not I good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what else is a shame? What? Did you take Great, great Weapon Master? What, the re-rolls? No, the minus 5 plus 10. Uh, I didn't say I was doing it. You didn't. I didn't say I was doing it, so I should have. I was supposed to say that, but I didn't, so it's fine. Okay. Ten damage and ten damage. Um, I think that's that's my bonus action as well. Um, and would I move around slightly? No, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably be quite focused. Mm -hmm. I should have said about them at plus. God damn it. <laughs> Allura. Mm. Start with plan D this time. Plan D had disadvantage though. <laughs> true. True. I always get confused over this, and I ask every single time. Mm -hmm. When when I cast Spiritual Weapon, yes. it's a bonus action. Can I then use my action to attack it? I can't, can I? You don't need to use your action to attack, because when you cast it, part of the bonus action is then casting it and attacking with it. Right. And then subsequent rounds, it's your bonus action to attack with. Right. Got yeah. So you can you cast... Can attack so, well, yeah. yeah, and then you can use your... Basically, it gives you something to do with your bonus action. Yeah. Um, so you cast an attack, and then subsequent rounds, bonus action attack. Yep. Cool. Oh, I got a model validation error, so I think I can't have my uh, 
<clears throat> like icon for it. Um, what would you but like I would it basically, to be? Um, a frying pan. Okay, well, I can't do a frying pan. <laughs> um, but we will get one. <laughs> I'll give you a... Um, um, a pink flaming sphere. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Can I move that? No. Um, no. However, no, I can't. If I do um, this, you should be able to move it now. Ah, beautiful. Thank you. Um, because I would cast it here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and then I would like to attack the okay. mole zombie. Make an attack roll with your spiritual weapon then, please. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, how would I be able to roll an attack roll with it? Um, does it tell you the stats in the spell? Uh, yeah, it does. Hang on. Apply active effects. What does that do? No, that's not doing anything. Um, you make a bell attack spe a spell attack against the creature within five feet. So, roll a d20. And uh, your spell attack modifier is your wisdom plus proficiency. So, plus five. Uh, plus five. Alas, nine misses. <laughs> I am af I'm afraid to say. It's okay. Says um, someone who's definitely not okay right now. <laughs> I'm really not okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And I can't do that thing where I can use a second spell as an attack as an action now, can I? I can't do that yet. You can only use cantrips, so um, you would uh, only be able to toll the dead or, <laughs> like, guidance. Uh. <laughs> toll the dead's a good choice. Do you toll the dead? It's necrotic. Oh, no. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that would matter. I think you'll be fine. I wonder why you said that with such pep. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to do it because I'm not any worse off, so fuck it. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, wait. 13's the AC, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so yeah. I mean, it failed, so it would take the 1d8 necrotic damage if it wasn't immune. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, and that's the end of my turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it's now the creature's turn. Uh, it's done that. Can't use that again. All right. It's going to... It's going to slam attack the one that did damage to it, I guess. Mm-hmm. Advantage. So, with advantage... Uh, 20. Yes. You take seven points of bludgeoning damage as you just take a solid blow to the chest again. Um, make... Uh, halved, yeah. Halved because you're raging, yeah. So, three. Um, make a constitution saving throw for me. Uh, 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 does it matter if I'm holding my breath? Or I guess not. It's not this time, no. Yeah, this is, uh, um, this is the roots... Okay. As the impact into your chest takes hold, you feel a burrowing at your chest. Um, almost like something's trying to dig in through your body. Um, but just through like sheer size and fortitude, you manage to just kind of push it away. You don't take any damage from the scratching or anything. There's no... Um, nothing left behind from it um, and you push the arm away 
and not suffering any any permanent damage from it. Good, good. Grant. Yes. Well, he's been coming up with a couple ideas, none of them good, none of them he really wants to do. And he remembers that, well, he doesn't remember, he just knows that foliage and stuff uh, burns. So he's going to try as an attempt. He's going to basically throw his action, like a, light a torch, and try and burn the foliage slash moss slash whatever it is away around the axes so he's able to uh, basically pick them up. Okay. Um, as you strike the strike the um, spark onto the torch it just erupts into flame immediately and you kind of you, you just start um, lighting the fungus um, the fungus sheet on fire and the top player on <clears throat> okay so the top player on the side um, it's like if you're this side just erupts immediately seemingly quite dry um on this side however it seems to be a bit damper less catchy it does burn away eventually slowly okay so it's sort of more of a literal slow burn than a um just like instantaneous catch and whoosh, gone now I'm going to assume that's because it got a bit of moisture from the blood of the dead creature. Perhaps. You are you are able to reach over and grab the um, axes with too, without too much trouble, though. Okay. Well, once it comes to a point where I can and I'm not going to risk myself, I will grab the axes. Okay. Now... Would you still allow me to move after that, or would... Yeah, you yeah, you've still got movement. You're fine. Oh, okay. I was going to say whether or not that being a full-blown, like, thing while everyone else is doing theirs. Uh, how much of it's burning? Is it still burning onwards, or just the area I put the torch to? Um. So on the top side... Yeah. That basically caught immediately and is just um, has just burnt away. Even onto, oh, okay. yeah, onto the wooden objects. Um, like that is, so this that, side's just pretty much alike. <laughs> kind of. It's singeing at the moment. Okay. Um, the bottom side is smouldering more, so it's not... Like, it shows the kind of lasagna layers working. Like, the evolution of the fungus as it grows. Some It can literally change um, instantaneously, almost. Um, that... It is interesting. It's, you're basically telling me it's evolving as it reacts to a new thing. <laughs> no, no, no. Like uh, The layers of the um, fungus seem to be different evolutions. Um, okay. Not necessarily it adapts to the fire. It's just the... Um, the... Consistency? Consistency and this part of the... Um, le this, this part of it seems to have grown differently okay since that's going on i'm just gonna leave that then and uh trying not to i guess burn myself or even fall or slash touch the other side that hasn't quite burnt yet i'm gonna walk up the path which was here mm-hmm yeah, I'm going to position myself here, and would you allow me to tell to well, I'm not yet, I suppose, yeah, I'll tell him I've got his axes, and obviously I'll offer them to him if he wants to grab them on his turn. Okay. And I lend it there. All right. Tulip. Um... I didn't hear a word that Grant said, so I'm deep within my rage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
still holding my breath, but jaw clenched. And I'm going to swing at this one again. I think, because I didn't do the great weapon the first time, I don't think I did it the second time. Okay, okay. Let's just go for... Um, I will we'll be reckless still. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, why not, right? Might as well. Nice. Consistent rolling, I approve. Yeah. I get another another D12 there if I crit. <laughs> true, That's true. Plus the double. Uh, That's a better roll. That's better damage. All right. Um, Tulip. Yes. Describe the kill for me. Okay. Um, so, very focused, narrow-minded, kind of like, hazy around the target. Um, just took an attack from it when it tried to burrow into my skin, but shrugged it off. And then just like, blood your eyes, just swinging my axe along the floor, and then just rising up through it to try to cut it in half. Um... And yeah, just like looking around for something else to, to chop. Okay. Um, again, as the creature, as you finish off the creature, there's a moment of pause and then it just explodes into spores. That rhymes and it wasn't intentional, but I'll take credit. Um, I need both Tulip and Allura and at Grant actually to both all make con saves for me. Um, it's that big? <laughs> yeah, it's 10 feet. Wow. Um, with advantage if you're holding your breath, which I would say Tulip isn't, just because you're raging currently. Okay. And I forgot how to do the actual saving for a part. So, should I roll again then? Yeah, roll again for me. Okay. Because before Tulip went into his blind rage, Wow, he did say hold his hold your breath. Jesus Christ, Chloe, come on. <laughs> uh, all right. You take seven points of necrotic damage, as um, another surprised um, inhalation of breath just means you inhale spores and we are at the end of combat a moment of pause um, just to take in what's happened Alora you are feeling very unwell um mm -hmm. And make just make another con save for me. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, um, you feel your stomach churning, and you throw up. Uh, great. Um, and there's it's very thick it's almost like water full of like flower water i guess that's a really weird way of saying it but it's just like paste paste basically um it doesn't sort of eject it just kind of slops out and it's a very disconcerting color Okay. The three of you are still out in the street. Allura, you have vomited up something disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, and it's at this point that the third guard, whose name currently escapes me, um, Taran, Tar the goblin, comes charging down on his horse. I heard sh some shrill squealing that was the that was the call no I'm hey. still in a rage personally so I'm just staring ahead until it runs wears out okay <laughs> okay I'll, I'll uh, turn to him as 
both my companions at the moment are incapacitated in some sort of way. And uh, I just kind of shake my head in disbelief and I was like, you hurt the flu, which was the sign Tulip gave you, has been playing for a good two minutes now. You should have been here. It's only been like 20 seconds. Well, whatever. <laughs> it feels longer. <laughs> Can't believe you didn't teleport here. Whitting, just appears. <laughs> okay. Anyway. I apologize for my tardiness. But I'm here now. Well, we've uh, doubt, luckily, with the problem. I don't want to call it a problem. But the problem, uh, we also found the woman, and let's just say, if you've seen anyone else that have touched a fungus or moss or whatever that green shit is, we should isolate them and watch them carefully. That seems smart. As far as I know, no one's touched any anything else. I certainly haven't. She's not looking too good, though. Yeah, yeah, it was tough. How are you, Alora? Um, I'd like to cast Cure Wounds on myself again at this point. Okay. You cast Cure Wounds and you, um, can give yourself hit, hit points back. Well, good roll. No. Nice. About time. <laughs> oh, watch pit now. Um. He comes. He steps off his horse and comes over to you, Alora. Mm -hmm. And he places his hand on your shoulder, ten very tentatively, and. Um, you feel a surge of warmth through your body. <laughs> um, and there's a few moments of just, oh, huh, this is better. And then, nah. The, the vomit starts back up again. Um, and just is paste thick and tastes vile. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That should have worked, but. Hmm. Seems it's more than we can or I can deal with. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to do. It, it's uh, fine. I... We'll figure something out. As she says that, I uh, kind of look at the goblin and go, what, what exactly did you do? The cast lesser restoration. It's a spell that yes, helps with... Yes, I know about it. I'm from a place where we learn about a lot of magic, even though we don't do it, we just learn it. And if that's not worked... This is not poison. It would appear That's not now. That's worrying. I don't know what this... This... Flux is, but... Flux, I like that. I don't. It's new, <laughs> it's dangerous, and we don't know what it is. It's certainly dangerous. We've seen that. If it took Oina so quickly, then we must act quickly to prevent it from taking you too, Alora. Well, Alora, how are you? As I say, I hate saying how are you feeling, but do you feel like you want to retreat from from us and hide in a corner in a sense um not yet 
we'll see how well that goes. Okay. I mean, that was the only thing that woman did that we saw before. So. All I can say is what what I'm saying is all of us have not touched it directly. We've only unfortunately had the dust slash spore particles around us. So it might take longer. We might have a chance. Spores, you say? Yes. Little dust that mm. kind of infect you. It breathed on me, and that's how I got sick. It breathed on you. Hmm. That's a very tulip way of saying that. <laughs> <laughs> As his rage falls, huh? Oh, the danger, dan danger air, the danger air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he looks down, and he realizes his hand axes aren't there. Then he looks at Grat and's like, Did "You get them. You threw them. Remember." <laughs> Giggles and then reaches out from. Okay. You may not have remembered, but here are your axes back. I got them for you. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Right. Keep them close next time. Yeah, okay. Touch and salt my belt again. So, where's the rest of them, then? What do you mean? The rest of the caravan? Well, the people. Because there's one on the floor here. There's one over there. Uh, weren't they... The guards? But that's what we're looking for, isn't it? As he says that, I will look at the mob zombie that they killed, and can I tell if it's, like, got any of the clothing of the guards that they were wearing um roll an investigation check for me you can't see any of the clothing the guards were wearing but that's about all you can intuit mm. yes i don't think this one was a guard but He, well, we don't know what happened to them. And considering the woman was wearing the clothes that she was wearing in the caravan and was still one of these mold fungus creatures, we should be able to recognize them. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it took a while, didn't it? But they haven't been gone that long. Let's... Probably just dead. No, let's not think like that, Tulip. Let's regroup, go back to the caravan, explain to them what's happened, what is, and uh, be on guard for any more of these creatures in case they show up. Hmm. I mean, there's a lot more to town. To, is there a lot more to town to check? Um, <clears throat> there's a bit more sort of south of, like, towards the bottom of the map. Um, there are sort of little tracks that you can't actually see because they're covered in fungus, but um, head off southwards. You can see um, a few more buildings that appear to be... Um, dock like basically okay um i mean Alua, you you look a bit funny maybe we should rest but i mean these other people they might be dead they might be dying should we just not i'll i'll be fine for now we'll think of something later hmm Okay. Um, Mr. Goblin Man, where, where, 
where else to look here in this place? Do you think? He has a quick look around. Well, there's those two tracks that go off in different directions, but that doesn't look overly inviting. Well, I'm still going for Discovering because surely, look, she's dead. The other two are nowhere, they're not exactly going to be probably captured by anyone. I mean, if they're captured, they're probably like these things, right? Maybe we go tell people in the big city and they send lots of people with, with lots of fire. Honestly, Tulip, that's not a bad plan. I'm more optimistic that them being trained guards aren't dead and they're just trying to survive, but you are right. We should head out of town and find some place where we can actually rest and then get help. Yeah. Well, look, we're, we're not strictly I... in charge, though. It's the, the Humi. I'm sure Owen will understand with the worry and the circumstance that has happened. Maybe you do the talking. Or Allura, because you look a bit under the weather. Maybe he'll listen to you more. I don't know. We'll see. Well, mm. I'll... Uh... Yeah, me and Alora will talk up front to Owen. You can protect your flower. We'll need a new one, actually. Alora, then... are you good to head back to the caravan now? Yeah, I should be fine. It's been a few minutes since you've felt the urge to be sick. Okay. In that case, then, I will start and lead the way back. Unfortunately, it's now coming out the other end. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Oh, no. <laughs> That's, that, that chain mail is not coming off in time, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jet the pals, you passed us. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's still paced. Oh. It's a bit hot. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> um, as you get back to the caravan, Owen still sat um, on the in the driver's seat, and the four passengers and the two traders are in the back. Um, the three passengers and the two traders are in the back. Um, the passengers, the civilians, are sort of talking amongst themselves, speculating. Um, um, Grant, you can kind of just about hear them talking about um, whether Oina's going to return and whether she's okay. She's looked; a, she looked a bit pale. She doesn't look very well. Um, okay. But they see you return. They see you return with um, with Taryn, and there's a slight look of hope before they see that it's just the four of you and a look of kind of resigned sadness overcomes them Owen looks down uh, at you do you have anything to report? Yeah. as I walk up I kind of I don't know why but I kind of because it my heritage bow a little look okay. back up at him as he says that and go well uh, we found what was the woman's name again I think it's so hard uh, we found the woman and what I can say clearly is make sure no one leaves the, the caravan again and touches this foliage 
I guess. She was corrupted and we unfortunately had to put her down as she tried to attack us. That is troubling news. What of my guards? Um, there were two drag marks that went off in separate directions. We couldn't follow them, unfortunately, because they went too far. But we got attacked by another, what only as I could describe as a fungal grass mush moth, like just plant based creature attack us. It was made of someone's m m remains, in a sense. It could have been a guard. I couldn't tell, and luckily the group that we have here were able to defeat it as well, but Alora over there is feeling unwell, but has hopefully showing no signs, so she should recover. You're sure and... of that? Honestly, no. But what I can say is whatever that's made her ill is different to what made the woman ill. So she definitely won't turn. Are you? Do you believe that? I kind of stand up straight then and I'm like, yes. I believe she won't turn. It's it, just a side effect. As in, does Grant believe that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. why Grant stands up straight. He is vouching for her completely. Okay. He has hope. And, uh, and he's like, we, we d discussed on what to do because this place is dangerous to walk around and explore. And what me and the group have decided is we think we should travel as far as we can until we need to rest outside of this town and outside of the any area with this kind of moss slash foliage or vine or whatever this weird flux stuff is and rest up and then go to the our destination, explain to them what's happening and hopefully get some help. I see. We're still three days from Port Grande. We've got to make it round the world tree first. But I agree getting as far away from here and this stuff as possible is not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Very well. Um. Allura, make a wisdom saving throw for me. Yeah, weird. Um, a kind of weird fizzy feeling in your stomach when Owen's speaking, but you can't quite tell why. There's no um, kind of trigger for it. It just seems to happen. Okay. <laughs> Um, Does he have anything else to say at this time, or...? We move. If you are... Okay. ...still wishing to travel with us, then... ...we will need... ...replacement guards, it seems. Your... ...payment will be... Presented when we arrive at Port Grande. 
I mean, I don't need any extra payment than what I was intended, so don't worry about that. And Alora here needs a rest, but me and Tulip will happily be replacement guards for now on the rest of our journey. What are we doing? We're guarding the caravan. Oh, of course, obviously. Say he's on board. Literally jumps on board. Literally jumps on board. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, if that's it, I will... I'll let Alora go first back onto the car uh, caravan. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll jump on. Just in case she feels unwell again, and then I'll get on after her to... Yeah. Okay. Um, Owen turns the cart around and starts leading you all out of um, Summer Heat. The... tension in the air is could be cut with a very sharp knife it's on a knife edge literally um, Owen now is quite obviously keeping an eye on Allura um, doesn't seem to trust you at all nope that's fair um, I thought I was more persuasive than that <laughs> <laughs> and he's steering a very deliberate path trying to um, keep his horses as away from any of the fungus as possible um, <clears throat> Taryn is this time ahead of the um, carriage um is leading, making sure, basically, um, keeping watch by himself. He's the he's the last one with a horse. He's the scout, essentially. Um, and you can see him. His head's never still. It's always looking from side to side, and um, sometimes even up in the air. Um, but about half an hour passes, and you start to re-enter the forest, the canopy um, blocking out what's left of the sort of mid to late afternoon sun and Allura, you're immediately feeling once once you're out of the sun and in the shade you immediately feel a bit more peppy um bit less drained okay um so sorry who's who's sat near me so you've got if you if you're sat in the back corner mm -hmm. you've got the two traders sat to your right mm -hmm. and a civilian to your left kind of back against the back wall mm -hmm. um then you've got grant in the other corner and um a civilian and a trader on the other side. I'm assuming at this point that um, Tulip is sat on the front driving, like driver's seat, driver's bench mm -hmm. with um, Owen kind of just doing <laughs> Tulip stuff. It's the best place to look out for flowers. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Cannot be disputed. And yeah, I am literally opposite uh, Alora, making, what, keeping an eye on her also as well as keeping an eye on the surroundings to make sure she doesn't turn into a plant. Okay. <laughs> um, make an investigation check, uh, Grant. Oh god, she's not a plant already, is she? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a singular giant mushroom already. <laughs> um, judging from what you saw from Boina, where the symptoms were very pronounced based on like the few glances you took of her or had of her 
Um, so far, Alora looks okay. She looks a bit sick and she looks a bit unwell, but she's not in anything resembling the kind of condition that Oina was in. Okay. Well, then my observations will still just carry out through the journey. It's the same, looking around and then every now and then looking back to check up on Alora. Okay. Sounds good. Um, travel continues and this time about an hour passes before you come clear of the fungus. It's spread quite considerably and considering you're leaving on the same road that you entered at least up until a certain point um, that's a bit of a concern. Um, Wait, you said an hour after leaving we start to not see it? Mm-hmm. And it was like 40 minutes on arriving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm putting two, two together. That's not good, but go on. <laughs> Allura. Yes. The further into the journey you get, your stomach starts to churn more and more. Um, once you leave the um, feeling of safety of your surroundings and you're out into the open forest, you immediately start to feel your stomach get sickly again. Mm-hmm. Um, and you kind of rest your head instinctively over the edge of the carrot the cart and you cough sort of almost like the prelude to throwing up to being sick but okay just a cough and um it's a bit of a bit of a phlegmy cough and it just kind of almost like a sneeze just eject through your mouth onto the floor and your eyes are just drawn to it and as you're kind of watching it disappear into the distance behind you uh, you can see that it just starts to move and roots start growing out from it and start embedding into the ground and within two minutes you can still see it and it's still growing oh my god um I am going to uh telepathically send a message to Grant mm -hmm. um <clears throat> as far as the, the way that I read this it can like I can only send a message to him he can't reply to me I think so um so I'm just gonna send him a message with what's just happened and saying that I think we should stop the cart. All right. Grant. And I'm gonna look at him to see kind of like what his facial response would be. Um, okay. Yeah, in that, like, how long has it been since we last saw the, like, m infected moths, I guess? About 20 minutes. Okay. In that case, then, Grant. He, he nods at Alora to show that he's heard. Mm -hmm. the information but decides to kind of is there room to sit next to her um you could shuffle in between one of the civilians and just kind of rearrange everyone okay yeah i'll try and move someone over to my spot and kind of like sit next to her so 
we can speak. I'm and... gonna send him another message, like as he sits next to me, mm -hmm. and just say, "I don't think we should speak in front of the others. I think maybe we should get Owen and stop the cart and speak away from the group." So I get that message and then sit down. Yeah. I I will look at you and go. You're right, but we're still too close. If you can hold on for even ten more minutes, then I will ask Owen. Okay, uh, Laura will nod and just kind of like look at the floor. Okay. Tulip. Oblivious to all of this, of course, you see um, quite a nice and colourful patch of um, wild forest flowers in the sort of off to the side of the road. Um, not quite as grandiose as the flower that you had in your pocket before, but these are new. Okay, are we going slow enough that I could jump out and then grab one and jump back on? It's walking pace. Okay, I'll turn to the, the I, I'm in, like, um, keep it going. I'll be something two, 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 two seconds. Okay. Um, and there's no like fungal around this. We've been out of that for a while, yeah. Yes. At this point, oh. you've been clear of it for about fifteen, twenty minutes, and um, okay. you know, as far as you're concerned, you're free. I'm just gonna just gonna jump off and then go and pick my, my the, the favourite looking one out of it. I only need one. Yeah. Um, I'm not greedy. There's an assortment of colours. There's um, yellows, greens, blues, not greens. Yellows, blues, reds. Um, quite a few whites. There's a purple. Mm. Um, and all oh. sorts of shades in between. I'm going to go for something bright because purple makes me think of that monster that was a bit purpley, blacky. Mm. Wise. So, probably a yellow. Yellow. There's plenty of yellows. The sun. Nice, bright yellow. Okay. It's got um, very round petals, um, sort of the size of a sunflower, but it's more leafy. Mm. Okay. I'm going to pick, pick the yellow one and put it in my top pocket. Get a little handful of soul first, though, because mm -hmm. I remembered. Yep. And put that in my pocket, and then I'm going to put the flower in. Okay. Um, and probably get a little bit of water and water skin and just pour it into my pocket. Your, um, your outfit is so well made that when you put the soil in your pocket, it doesn't seep through or anything. Um, mm -hmm. So the soil stays in place. Once you soak it with your water, that does soak through. So you've got a bit of a wet patch on your chest. But that's okay. It's worth it. Yeah, it is. Uh, and then I'll just jump back on. Cool. You catch back up, um, jump back on, and now you've got a nice plant in your in your pocket. Good. Good, good. Um, and with that, we will end the session for today, I think. Good job, guys. Cool. You didn't die. Yep. Proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> you made it through Yay. fungal creatures it's and not worrying that they're at our level it's worrying that they can affect us don't we nah, it's gonna roll well it's fun what do you mean <laughs> nah? we literally are seeing it in process I i'm excited for it to happen though i have no idea what hey. you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> no it's in like that sense <laughs> I don't want my teammates or slash companions to die. But watching someone else happen with it might be interesting. Of course. When it when it's happening to someone else, it's much more good. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, although, 
probably earlier because I'll be more ready next week. Um, but yeah, that's the first episode of this new campaign. Um, the Grip of the Fungal Queen. Still a really cool name. And now probably makes a lot more sense to people. Um, oh yeah, this was great. Good, 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 good. I'm glad. I've been working on this campaign for about a year. Just it like, just definitely like a shows. Point. It's, I, I'm loving the whole theme of it already. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for next week. Cool, good. Oh, yeah. I'm excited too. Um, so yeah, feel free to join us again, um, where we will have more fun and shenanigans. Um, is there anyone to raid? I don't know because I'm not logged in. God damn it. <laughs> Doesn't look like anyone D&D related on my list. No, if my browser will load, I'll have a quick browse otherwise. Uh... I can't believe we leveled up after one session. <laughs> no, and it was okay. only two creatures. <laughs> wow, you'd be so lucky. I mean, I wish. I'm not that generous. I know we're close, and you didn't want to put that third creature in because it would have meant we would have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I the third I... guard. Well, the actual second guard, third person. <laughs> Maybe we should have gone looking for the second guard. Maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you've quite got the grasp of what's happening here. <laughs> um, no, I'm not finding anyone to raid, so we'll just end there for today. Um, Tuesday's usually quite a good day for raids, but never mind. Um, but yeah, thank you for playing, everyone. I appreciate you. Um, oh no, cheers for DMing. Yeah, thanks for DMing again. <laughs> That's all right. I'm back in the chair, baby. It's been a month. Yeah. But looks like it just comes naturally. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see you all next week. Um, and feel free to tell your friends 